ourselves as engineers and scientists. And for the moment being, consider yourself to be a common man. And allow me to take you on a journey where things that a layman would consider impossible will come within human reach. You see, ladies and gentlemen, from huge computers to laptops to palm tops, from big to compact, our technological advancements have not only reduced the size of our components, but also increased our performance and reliability manifold. And with nano being the buzzword today, the next big thing will be really small. Carbon nanotubes, ladies and gentlemen, can easily be said to be the most important nano material of this century. You know why? That's what I'm here for. Throughout the course of this presentation, we were trying to develop a fundamental understanding of what carbon nanotubes actually are, and then we look towards how they can be used, some current and some potential, some potential remarkable applications. So, to start with, carbon nanotubes are actually long cylindrical hollow tubes and they're made up of carbon atoms as we do hybridize. Okay, just like, uh, you know, uh, another brother was previously presenting his presentation, he told you about the wonders of graphene. Just fold a graphene sheet, and what you get is a carbon nanotube. Building upon that, carbon nanotubes can also be made in different diameters, small, big. But remember that all of this is actually on the nanoscale. Interestingly, carbon nanotubes also possess the ability to join and assemble to form various different shapes. For example, you see there, you see a T kind of a shape, and here you see a hexagonal, uh, you know, directional assembly shape. So carbon nanotubes have this interesting property that they can actually combine and form all sorts of different shapes. The properties possessed by carbon nanotubes are sure to ignite the interest of anyone who has even a single book at them. You see, uh, apart from being extremely lightweight, very strong. They are also efficient thermal conductors. Their thermal conductors is known to be even better than that of diamonds. And talking about uh, electrical properties, they possess unique electrical properties. They're even more conduct and you know uh, conducting than copper. And they can also be made to be insulators, semiconductors, or conductors. Marvelous, isn't that? Now that we have fundamental understanding of what carbon nanotubes are and how they can be you know, used to some extent, let us have a look at what applications they're being put to. Ladies and gentlemen, brace yourself because what you're looking at is one of the most strongest materials that is even theoretically possible. And obviously, the uh, superior mechanical properties offered by carbon nanotubes are being put to use in various structural applications. For example, durability, high strength, high flexibility, and increased fatigue strength, they're all made use of in sports equipment and aeroplanes and other ways. What you see down there is actually a polymer composite to which carbon nanotubes have been added. What does it do there? Not only does it impart better strength, more durability, and more flexibility to the, to the composite, it also gives the pl plastic the ability to conduct electricity. Imagine that, conducting plastics. Imagine all the horizons of plastic electric circuitry that would open to us if we could use this kind of a plastic and carbon energy composite. What you see down here, ladies and gentlemen, is a muscle. It's an artificial carbon nanotube muscle. Carbon nanotubes are the only known material, strong and flexible enough to be used to make artificial muscles. Yeah, and in fair to people, even soldiers, you might, you know, benefit a lot from this kind of stuff. Down there, what you see is a bullet that, you know, a projectile that's attacking a carbon nanotube. What it's, show, what's, what's it's showing is the carbon nanotubes are very strong, right? They can be used to make bulletproof vests, <laughs> bulletproof t-shirts, because the vests made from carbon nanotubes will be highly flexible, very light. They can even be made available to the public, provided the cost goes down. 
And I'm sure many people in Pakistan will be really interested in that kind of stuff, especially in these days. Moving forward, coming to uh, medical science, carbon nanotubes are being used to treat one of the most dangerous and most feared diseases of all time. Yes, my friend, cancer. Carbon nanotubes can be used to treat cancer. They're ins inserted into the body and they target specific cancerous cells. You can provide radio frequency to the carbon nanotube at that region and it produces heat energy which effectively kills the cancerous cell. However, there is one drawback, that is why a lot of research is being put into this topic still, that is the carbon nanotubes can be toxic. The exact toxicity uh, aspects are not fully understood yet, however, it is known that they may destroy some biological cells that they come into contact with. So a lot of research has been put into this matter still. Moving forward, ladies and gentlemen, electronics and energy, another indispensable area of application. What you see right here, ladies and gentlemen, is a solar cell. But it's not just a solar cell. It's a superior solar cell because it's made up of nanotube. What makes it superior is better conductors, higher electrical efficiency and you know it's moldable and one other thing is the surface area is highly increased because of nanotechnological engineering. Coming kind of here is a field emission display which makes use of the same kind of properties that the solar cells are making use of. You get better resolution, higher image quality because of nano size engineering. And you get obviously one of the most major problems in displays is ghosting. So you get, you know, uh, a bit of ghosting because your, you know, your uh, sources are very small. Moving forward from that, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to bring to your notice two very groundbreaking proposed uses for carbon nanotubes. One of the uses is a drug delivery system. Basically, the purpose of the system is to deliver the drug or the medicine directly to the cell which is diseased rather than injecting the whole medicine into the body right so that the drug is delivered exactly where it is required it's carried out in several stages in the first stage the drug molecule is actually put inside the carbon nanotube in the second stage the ends of the tube are closed using hydrogen sulfide bonds in the third stage Cell markers are placed at the ends of the tube. These cell markers are actually going to tell the tube which cell it's going to enter so that it does not enter any other cell than the intended ones. Moving forward, the next stage is injection. Now you've prepared, you put it inside, it only enters the cell marker that it's, it's meant for. Once inside, the reducing atmosphere inside the cell will break the hydrogen sulfide bonds, the tube opens up and the drug is delivered. The benefits of using such kind of a target side delivery system are obviously reduced dose sizes and naturally leading to less side effects, less production, less volume production of uh, drugs, saves your resources and energy, and obviously this will spell a revolution in medical sciences. Moving forward, I'm, I believe all of us have had the experience of traveling in an elevator, going up, right? up and down a building, imagine an elevator that could go up and up and up, right up ladies and gentlemen into outer space, imagine a space elevator, that's what we're talking about, it will be a revolutionary means of transport from earth to space, you can just go inside the elevator, go right up to outer space, seems interesting right, but what's the problem, the problem is such a huge structure requires immense strength. So what's the solution? Yeah, you guessed it, right? Carbon nanotubes are the only known material strong enough for such a huge material. And once such a thing is implemented, I'm sure this will be one of the most uh, important breakthroughs in the history of engineering and technology. If we compare the space elevator design with the current rocket launch design that we have, we can see that it's far better. You know what? Because that method is quite inefficient, cannot be reused, and is very expensive. Whereas this method that I'm proposing here is much more efficient, 
which is easier than launch and re-entry and many times cheaper. This will allow us to bring you know, space travel to the mainstream, to the common people, make it cheap enough. As a conclusion, I would like to say the common nanotubes have unmatched properties, they are giving us an unmatched perspective and they are giving us the ultimate control over our materials and properties. They surely are the miracle molecules and their importance in the future will only increase. Thank you ladies and gentlemen.